What is biotechnology? Well, that's a good question. You could call it the technology of life, part engineering, part science, part medicine, and most importantly, part discovery. At the Hudson Alpha Institute for Biotechnology, we call our scientists investigators. Why? Because discovery plays the most important role in biotechnology, whether it's the search for disease therapies or the discovery of a novel biological product. So, we know that biology, the science of life, and technology, the application of science, come together to make up biotechnology. But, to really understand what biotechnology is, you have to think like an investigator. And that means asking a lot of questions. Questions like, what is DNA? Every organism, from the aardvark to the zebra, from the tiniest bacteria to the tallest redwood, has a unique set of recipes encoded in its DNA. Think of DNA as the book of life, and in the book are the recipes, or designs, of all living creatures. These recipes tell us what each organism is made of, how its cells function and interact with one another, and their environment. Let's take a closer look. Bacteria are single-celled organisms, while plants, animals, and humans are made up of trillions of cells organized into different functional systems like leaves, skin, and muscles. All of these cells contain DNA. DNA dictates how cells behave and to which functional system they belong. In plant and animal cells, DNA is stored in the nucleus in long strands called chromosomes. Humans have a total of 46 chromosomes, 23 inherited from each parent. DNA is complex, but we can think of its shape as a tiny, twisted ladder. The molecular rungs on the ladder contain the genetic information for each strand of DNA. We've highlighted and colored each of the four kinds of rungs, called bases, to make it easier to see the way each strand is encoded. Each base is paired with another base consistently, allowing the information to be read from either side of the ladder. So let's further simplify our illustration by removing one side of the DNA ladder. The four bases, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, create sequences of DNA in much the same way words are made up of sequences of letters. As we look at the pattern of bases in half our DNA ladder, you'll notice the matching pattern in our Book of Life. Only 1% of the roughly 3 billion rungs of the human DNA ladder are organized into genes. These genes, roughly 20,000 of them, are recipes for all the proteins that make up the human body, like insulin, which helps regulate the body's use of sugar as fuel, hemoglobin, which helps red blood cells carry oxygen everywhere in the body, and collagen, which serves as a building block for bones and other structures in the body. This sequence of A's, T's, C's, and G's is virtually identical for most cells in the body. Each cell carries a full set of genes, but only a subset of these genes is active for each cell's type. Not only is DNA virtually identical between cells, it is also virtually identical from one person to the next. Only one-tenth of one percent of our DNA contains differences. These differences lead to the variety we witness every day, like height or eye color, but can also influence susceptibility for disease. So what causes all of these differences? To think about this, let's look at another type of recipe. This time, one you might find in your favorite cookbook, chocolate cake with chocolate frosting. The recipe for chocolate cake provides a specific list of ingredients and a set of instructions that tell you how to assemble the ingredients into a finished product. What might happen to the finished product if the recipe were changed in some way? Well, to some extent, the effect on the cake depends on the type of change in the recipe. Some changes don't alter the final product at all, while others lead to very visible differences. Sometimes these differences alter the final product so much that the cake doesn't even look like a cake. Let's take a detailed look at the impact of changes in the recipe for our chocolate cake. Here's our recipe, which calls for brand A flour. Replacing brand A with brand B makes no noticeable difference. A more noticeable change would be replacing chocolate frosting with strawberry frosting. The flavors have changed and the cake looks different, but the recipe still results in a cake. If we make a change that dramatically alters the recipe, like deleting flour from our list of ingredients, the results, well, can only be described as cake-like. 
Dramatic results also arise when small changes are combined. Small changes to the recipe, like a little too much milk or not enough flour, individually won't affect the cake, but together, they lead to a gooey mess. Changes in the environment also impact the final form of the cake, particularly in combination with small changes in the recipe. Fresh baking soda works better than old baking soda, but you might not notice if no other changes are present. In the same way, opening the oven door frequently alters the baking temperature, but there may be no effect as long as you use fresh ingredients. However, the old baking soda, combined with the environmental impact of opening the door too many times, would result in a very flat cake. Now let's look at changes in our DNA recipe and how these changes impact health. A single letter change in DNA can result in dramatic changes, such as removing or impairing a protein's functionality. For example, changing a single base in the hemoglobin gene can lead to the disease sickle cell anemia. DNA deletion, another type of change, often occurs in individuals with certain forms of muscular dystrophy. The original protein produced by this gene keeps muscle cells intact, but deletions lead to a shortened protein that is incapable of sustaining the muscle, causing the symptoms of muscular dystrophy. Many well-known diseases such as heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and schizophrenia are due to a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Much like our cake analogy of using old baking soda and uneven baking temperatures, type 2 diabetes is an example of the interaction between genetic factors that alter the body's response to sugar and environmental factors such as lack of exercise and poor diet. Each genetic or environmental factor alone is not sufficient to cause the disease, but when multiple factors are combined, the chance for disease is much higher. Think of the biotechnology lab as a kitchen full of tools and ingredients where all of the various recipes can be studied and investigators can discover what happens when a recipe is changed. Investigators have learned that the recipe is only part of what influences the final product and so they ask questions about other factors such as the environment for example. Baking a cake at high altitude requires a different temperature. Same recipe, different environment. The tools of biotechnology enable investigators to identify changes in the recipe, determine relevant environmental risks, and develop an appropriate solution. Techniques in modern medicine have come a long way in providing therapies for large populations. However, biotechnology investigators are taking the next important step towards discovery of therapies specific to individual needs. In short, the concept of personalized medicine is a set of tools and therapies designed for your personal recipe, your DNA. To illustrate personalized medicine in a bit more detail, imagine a visit to your doctor. She asks you the usual questions about your diet, level of exercise, past history, and so forth. Your sample arrives in the lab. DNA is extracted from your white blood cells. This provides the genetic material needed for testing. A typical test would identify differences between your genetic code and a reference code illustrated here as our book of life. For example, the test could focus on the genes implicated in a specific type of disease. The genetic differences are flagged and analyzed as increasing or decreasing the risk for the disease. Often, multiple genes are examined. and the results are combined into a report that summarizes the risk of disease based on your personal genetic sequence. You and your doctor review the report and identify ways to reduce your overall risk using medical therapies or making lifestyle changes. So, knowing your genetic risks may help you and your doctor treat or even prevent the onset of disease. And one more thing, your blood sugar level seems a little bit elevated. Maybe you should stay away from eating so much cake. This is the promise of personalized medicine. 
But how close are we to having personalized therapies and screens specific to our genetic profiles? Closer than you might think. Every day, investigators, lab technicians, scientists, and information specialists use these tools to search for the next medical discovery.